Hello, everyone. American news sources continue to pretend that Ukraine doesn't exist, with the exception of maybe uh, the national public radio. Uh, everyone else is uh, talking about Trump's antics and uh, how the uh, certain Republicans uh, continue losing their shit over Hunter Biden. So, uh, as the result, most of my news bites these days come from the British sources, uh, European, and Ukrainian sources. Uh, the Guardian, Euronews, Reuters, Kiev Independent, Censor, etc. So, if at any point you want to go and look up the stories I'm reporting on, please feel free to go to those sources. They are still covering the war in Ukraine. To open today, Russia had unleashed another huge wave of attacks um, across Ukraine. Uh, it's been nationwide, uh, those apps that uh, people in Ukraine are using that tell them uh, where the attacks are, probably have been going off pretty much all night. I know my dad has it on his phone, and that, just to remind everybody, this is an app that tells you if the sirens are going on, whether this is a nationwide attack or a region-specific attack. And that determines what people do for their safety. So in this particular case, um, it was a wide attack, uh, and it employed, again, everything. Cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, uh, hypersonic drones, um, all of it. And as some of the sources pointed out, some of the problem with those is that these are the cheap, fast, low precision projectiles. So, despite what Russian government says about having hit all of its targets, no, this is just another attempt to frighten and intimidate Ukrainian civilians and beat them into submission. So this article from Kiev Independent, uh, this is available in English, as you can see. So you can go to Google Kiev Independent and you can read the full summary, pull up a map and see just the extent of all of the attacks. Uh, a lot of this was uh, close to uh, my home region of Zaporizhia. So this was in the Sumy Oblast, uh, Sumy region. Uh, there's been some damage to multiple buildings. Uh, so far, they're saying no casualties. So far. There were also explosions in Chernihiv region. Uh, again, Chernihiv is one of the oldest historic cities in Europe, and this is how Russians are treating it, just like a target practice. Uh, Kremenchuk in the Poltava region, uh, Dnipropetrovsk region, our neighbor, uh, for those of us from the Zaporizhia region. So, yeah, this is, this is definitely nationwide. So, what do our allies have to say about that? We talked about this yesterday, so the uh, expansion of the security agreement between Ukraine and the United Kingdom. Uh, UK made a two and a half billion pound commitment to Ukraine's defense, which is great. Uh, we are continuing to maintain close ties with our friends in Poland, who have been amazing. Uh, and again, uh, Right now, I know that uh, U.S. Republicans are trying to uh, whip up the frenzy about immigration, saying that how a few thousand people coming across the border are going to overwhelm U.S. economy. That is bullshit. I want to reiterate this. This is very important. So what Poland did for us, the po population of Poland is one-tenth of that of the U.S., okay? Almost exactly one-tenth. They took in eight million Ukrainians. This would be like U.S. taking in 80 million refugees and immigrants. 
Let that sink in. That would potentially do something to the economy. Five, ten thousand of Mexicans crossing the border? No. So shut the hell up. France and Ukraine are talking about this. It's, I'm wondering if they are working on a similar defense and security agreement as Ukraine had just hammered out with the UK. We'll see. Um, again, France, like the UK, understands what it's like when you are fighting a war and there's no help coming and you have to basically figure out on the run what what you're going to do. And unfortunately, Americans have a sad propensity to stereotype the French as cowardly, completely forgetting that the reason America exists today is because they had aid from France in 1776 and because Rochambeau and Lafayette shed their blood in the American field defending this country, despite the fact that they didn't really have the skin in the game. So, anywho... We'll see how that goes. There's probably going to be more news about new agreements with France. Now, while this was all happening, what did the U.S. do? Again, right now, U.S. is in a quagmire, unable to issue new assistance to Ukraine, but it placed sanctions on the export of ballistic missiles from North Korea. And again, guys, this is useless. It's not going to do a damn thing. Right now, again, if you're looking at the active part taken by France, uh, Poland, the Baltic states, the UK, US is beginning to look really weak. Now, um, a little bit of a home front uh, note here. So this is back in Kiev's independent. I wanted to highlight this bit right here. So they um, hit the uh, city of Shostka in the Sumy region uh, early in the morning saying one person was injured and 12,000 people were left without heating for most of the morning. So this means that this struck at 7.30 a.m. By noon, their time, they had heating back in a, in a few hours. I'm not saying that a few hours without heat in the middle of winter in Ukraine is fun, but I want to make that point very strongly. Their heating was restored within hours and this is under constant barrage of missiles etc now by comparison this is russia this particular one is in uh, the autonomous republic of tuvashia where people have been without water since december 20th they're having to melt snow to get water this is another Completely another different place, different uh, city. Lipetsk. 27 apartment buildings were left without heating for days. This is Russia. Nobody's attacking them. Nobody's shooting at them. Nobody's firing rockets at them. And yet, this is these two examples are only examples. I've been following the story. They have entire villages and towns sitting without heat, electricity, and running water for weeks, if not months. Why does the world continue to be afraid of these people? 